how you found theology over easy. Advent is a good time to prepare for Christmas by reflecting on the Christian doctrine of the incarnation. But first, let's lay some groundwork. In the Episcopal Church, you will hear people talk a lot about incarnational theology. It's frequently tied to social justice issues as a way of encouraging and advocating for change. It's a way of saying that Christians must embody God's love in the world, not just talk about how Jesus, for example, helps us avoid hell and get to heaven. Indeed, salvation is precisely about God and Jesus Christ rescuing all creation, and therefore we must embody God's purposes here on earth. At the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in which Paul talks at length about our own future resurrection, his climactic conclusion is surprising. What he wrote did not lead him to a heavenly focused conclusion, but rather an earthly one. He wrote, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. What I'm trying to point out is that it is in fact the resurrection of Jesus that leads Paul and others to insist that followers of Christ must embody God's love for us and creation in the world. We need to be reminded of this because an incarnational theology that is unmoored from the cross can quickly devolve into a triumphalism that says we're fine just as we are precisely because God hallowed humanity by becoming flesh. In her book, The Crucifixion, Understanding the Death of Jesus Christ, Fleming Rutledge points out, it is only a single-minded focus on the incarnation that presents a problem. An almost exclusive emphasis on the incarnation diminishes the cross as though it were a minor theme. On the contrary, the two stand or fall together. At the Cloisters Museum in New York City, you can see the 15th century Merode altarpiece. It's a three panel artwork depicting the Annunciation. In the center panel in the upper left, you may have to look carefully, an embryonic Christ can be seen descending toward Mary and already carrying his cross. None of this is to say that the incarnation is peripheral or unimportant to theology. In fact, as the church continued to think and reflect about the atonement, it recognized that for humanity to be saved, Jesus had to be fully human. That's what the incarnation is all about. The church said Christ could not redeem what Christ was not. At the same time, it also insisted that if the effects of human sin and rebellion have truly been forgiven by his crucifixion and death, then he had to be fully God. So to sum up this groundwork, it's vital that we always connect the incarnation with the cross. Doing so helps us remember that by his incarnation, God and Jesus Christ affirmed that we are loved as we are. We're told as much in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. And Jesus took that love all the way to the cross because true love doesn't leave you where you are. I'll see you next week on Theology Over Easy.